Hey, Jimbo Box here. Um, I'm going to be giving you guys a tutorial on how to render forms with directional light. I think it's the fastest way to render out forms. Um, generally, what's in the light will be rendered, and the stuff that's in the shadow will stay kind of flat. Um, and because of that, it makes it really easy to manage several illustrations at the same time. So it's a really good way of uh, doing illustrations if you have multiple or are crunched for time. Um, so to start off, um, all I'm really doing right now is just rendering out uh, basic forms, I'm treating this gray tone that I have laid down, my flats, as a mid-tone. Um, and so I'm basically rendering everything that's going to be in the light. And um, I'm doing this in grayscale. The reason why I'm doing this in grayscale is because I think color gets in the way. Um, when you start with color, if, if you're not too comfortable with it, you're going to end up fudging it constantly and changing, you know, colors left and right and pushing paint and it's a never-ending cycle. So if you start in grayscale, at least you can get the primary forms down and then when you jump into color, you're not fussing so much, uh, especially with the rendering. So I'm using, believe it or not, I'm using just the standard hard brush um, in Photoshop. I, I don't have too many fancy brushes. When I do concept art, sure, I use a couple just to get some, some of the, uh, some texture down and stuff. But for this type of illustration, I, I don't think it's very necessary to have any sort of special brushes. I do, however, um, have one brush um, that you'll see me use. I'll, I'll switch into it for certain forms for, for harder shapes. I have like a square brush um, and it's got a flat edge so it's easier to handle solid surfaces. But um, for the most part, for characters, I just use this the standard brush um, for all the organic forms. And I kind of blend the old-fashioned way. I don't use a smudge tool. I use, um, I just color pick a lot. So I'm using the, the drop tool, the eye drop tool, and just blending between the two. If you zoomed in really close, you'd see like a lot of little tiny brush marks. But I think that's cool because it gives, it gives the impression that you're painting something. Um, if you use a soft brush to too often, then the image will start looking like it's uh, like it's been rendered out in 3D. But that, if that's the look you're going for, then obviously use that brush. But, um, for this particular illustration, I was asked to um, try to try to have some Jet Set Radio influence. So that's that's why this character has uh, rollerblades and the headphones and the whole setup. Uh, even the background, um, the background is going to actually stay simplified, like flat, uh, to to kind of pay homage to the Jet Set Radio style. And, and then the character is going to be fully rendered. How far I'll go with the detail, I don't know. Uh, I'll probably just keep going until I can't anymore. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes.
So here, um, okay, so I think it's really important to just draft out everything, uh, including areas. Oh yeah, sorry by the way, there's like construction in front of my building, so like there's gonna be a lot of random noises and stuff. So try to bear with me. I'm really sorry about that. Um, but anyways, uh, I usually draw out everything. Like if you know this character, there's this big area of her back just exposed, and I figured it'd be um, a really good opportunity to have some anatomical um, uh, anatomical structures in there. So um, what I did was I drew it all out. It doesn't mean I'm going to keep the lines in there because then she'll just look really awkward. Uh, I, I, I will end up, you know, rendering it all out and then it, the lines will disappear as we go. Um, so I think it's important to draw out everything, even if you're not sure if you're going to keep it or not. It also helps, like, just maintain the entirety of the pose. You know, if you end up changing things, you'll, you'll be able to do it without worrying about how this should look or, or is this structure going to look correct. As long as you draw out all the muscular areas of, of the form it is that you're posing, then it'll be easier to plot out the rendering and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, it's still just your typical form rendering here. I, I should explain a little better, I guess. It's, um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm keeping the tones really, really close together um, to show off every form. I don't want to use uh, any tones that are beyond a specific range so I think right now uh, when you guys open up the PSD you can you can color pick this yourself I'm actually doing a voiceover um, over the actual video because being that this is my first tutorial I obviously had a lot of technical difficulties so uh, I am recording this after the fact but if you color pick the tones right now, they're really, really close together. Like, I keep about a 30% difference between the overall tone. So, like, I set down a mid-tone, and then I choose a darker color, well, a darker tone that's, like, 30% darker. That's the darkest I will go, and then everything in between um, will stay within that range. So, and I do this so that you're seeing really basic form changes, but without having to, like, overexpose or you know have really really deep shadows um, because I want to save that stage for uh, for the color stage uh, and I think that that's important because when you're with Photoshop when you're using the, the several layers to get the colors that you want uh, things are gonna happen to your tones um, and then depending on the material like you, things are going to change. Like you're going to have materials that have um, uh, more contrast or that have uh, higher uh, uh, speculars, um, deeper shadows. Like So anyways, you just want to keep everything really close in this stage and then in the color stage you can go nuts um, with the tones. So um, in this stage, just render out the forms really simply with Keeping keeping a really short tonal range, and then um, and then you could also um, hit in some of those darker uh, darker tones as well. Like I, I did put some occlusion shadows and stuff in certain areas, and those are gonna those are tend those tend to be pretty 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 dark. But um, yeah, so treat each surface I guess with. Um, with that 30% range in mind. Um, <clears throat> another thing is, I'm so I'm not actually uh, a manga artist by trade or anything like that. I didn't study manga illustration or go to school for manga st style stuff. Or, it was just something that I did for fun on the side and I <clears throat> originally studied animation, uh, traditional animation, uh, and 3D animation. Uh, so my my style that I was going for was really 
Um, it looked like the, the new DC, uh, DC TV series uh, characters and stuff. And I, I studied a lot of character design, so I, did, I used to play a lot with shapes and stuff. So I actually find um, manga style uh, drawings and illustrations pretty challenging, which is why I, I actually am doing it. And I, and I started it off as a career. Um, because I'm always interested in learning something that I just am really bad at. And so I had started off um, <clears throat> drawing out some some uh, some manga styled illustrations um, before graduating animation school. And uh, long story short, I actually ended up snagging a really cool job uh, at the same time. Uh, I got hired by Udon Entertainment. So it's it's a company that deals with uh, Street Fighter. Um, they do Bandai and Namco stuff. Um, they're just a big publishing company in North America that does uh, primarily um, manga and um, manga and uh, I guess Japanese game type stuff. Um, so. Anyways, um, that being said, so this is always it's always a challenge for me, and I, and, and so I I, I want to bring a, a um, I really want to stress another point across. If you're struggling with something, that's a good thing. It means you're learning. Um, and so if, and and if you are struggling and you can't figure something out, ask, ask another artist friend. Uh, Make a lot of artist friends. Um, don't be annoying about it, but uh, find people that uh, you are that aren't necessarily you know way ahead of you or or tons uh, um, far, far more skilled than you. Like that's that's not what I'm saying. You, you want to find artist friends that have something that um, that they can do that you can't do, and. Um, literally like like trade skills like just trade ways of doing things um talk about it with uh, with 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 them like what what it is you're struggling with see if they can handle it um uh, in this particular case like i i didn't know what i was doing with the face if when you um if you look at the uh the steps that i uploaded the first step uh you'll see the sketch and it's really loose and there's like almost no style in there. It's just strictly a pose. Um, and then I had my my wife, who is actually really in in uh, she's really a, a manga artist. I can't I can't describe it any other way. Uh, she came in and, and actually just roughed out like the the details of the eye and the hair, you know. And so that was really cool. It helps uh, it helped me get started on this this image. So. So it's good to, to collaborate. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so, but that being said, throughout this whole entire tutorial, you're gonna see the face just completely change. I mean, because I start adding more of the Jet Set Radio influences in there, and it just it it changes pretty drastically for for the better. I thought it looked really cool towards the end. So, so yeah, I'm gonna just uh, let you guys watch this for a bit. I'll fast forward and pick up a little later, um, and uh, yeah, so.
All right, so this is going to be the stage in which I'm using a uh, normal layer. Um, I'm going to be using a, um, not a normal layer, sorry. I'm going to be using a color layer to start adding in just some basic uh, colors. And I, I'm, I'm choosing colors randomly, like I... I'm bearing in mind that the background's yellow, so I am tinting the skin tone a little more towards that uh, that color. But um, for the most part, I just start with something pretty basic, and then I'll change it up with like a color balance um, or or a, uh, a hue and saturation uh, balance um, because Photoshop's got all these neat tools. So you know you should use them for sure. Uh, so you don't stress out about, oh my gosh, am I picking the right color? Is this going to look right? And blah, blah, So this is really just to get started, right? Uh, so I'm just coloring out all the, uh, all the different materials on the character. Um, also, just a, another quick tip when you're doing this don't don't have any opacity on or anything like that I just uh, just a, an opaque brush with no transparency and just fill it in it's, it's like you're just um, color literally just color book style coloring the character because your tones are already set so um, if, if you do another step that you can do after this is you can have another layer like another like color layer or overlay layer, multiply layer, whichever, and start adding in uh, hue differences in, in certain areas, you know, like uh, you can use like a soft brush and say you want some more like blush on her cheeks or something like that, you can use a soft brush and do that on top. All right, so um, right about now, I'm gonna use a uh, I'm gonna use a color balance. Now that I've got like kind of my basic colors in there, 
I'm gonna add in my uh, color balance to start harmonizing some of the colors I just laid down because they're um, clearly just local colors, which means they're just the colors of what it's supposed to be in natural light. But now I'm adding in uh, this so that I can push them and harmonize them towards uh, what I what I actually want, which is more of like a warmer setting. So you can see the difference there. Um, here I'm actually taking, I took the color, uh, I took the um, line art layer and I added another one and I'm actually colorizing the line art right now and I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna blur it as well and add it on top of everything. Uh, and I, I, I'm doing this because what it helps is around the e edges, like I wanted it to feel like there's some occlusion shadows without having to actually render it all out. So by, by doing this um, with a little bit of a blur involved, it's, it's going to actually uh, give that effect that there is occlusion shadows or that the light is rolling off um, the character towards the back side. So these stages are going to get really messy because now I, I'm going to start uh, bumping up those um, tones, which is what I was talking about before, where like I don't add in the cores or, or anything really like that in the black and white stage. I do it in the color stage. And that's because like I want, I want things to be... Um, I want those areas specifically to be controlled um, with color. Um, I find it's easier to bring out saturation this way and, and or to desaturate areas. It's also easier to get a clearer grasp on what it is I want to do with this light. But in the grayscale phase, if you do it, it's going to be so hard to get it into color afterwards. It's just you're gonna be messing with layers just as long as if you as if you just did it this way. So um, at least this way is more direct. So so yeah, now I'm gonna be bouncing out around the image. I'm using a color burn layer. I'm gonna bounce around and um, add in all the core shadows uh, where the light is hitting tangent with that surface. Once again, I do apologize. I live downtown. And so it's really noisy outside. They are doing construction right outside my, my building. So um, if you do hear a lot of just sirens or beeping, my apologies. So notice how I'm, I'm doing this core stuff uh, with a color burn. And then I am going to use another layer for the, um, for the uh, light and highlights. Um, I'm using color burn, but it's because I want a really saturated image. It's not always the, the layer I'll use to put in cores and stuff. And um, it depends on what you're what you're going for. You have to already have kind of a clear idea of what you want um, before you start. And actually, at the beginning of this tutorial, if you saw, I was drawing like an arrow pointing downwards, and I was basically indicating that I was going to do a directional light from that that angle. So it's going to really light her back, and then hit spots on her face and hair and. Um, I'm going to make it really strong because I want her to pop since it is a cover. I want her to feel like she's lifting off the cover. Um, really separate it from the 2D flat background. So um, I th I'm pretty sure I'm going to use like a uh, an overlay layer for the light.
All right, so here we go. I'm going to start with the uh, overlay layer to start uh, knocking out all the um, highlights and lit areas um, on my midtone here. The back's going to be really blown out because I want it to really feel like she's, you know, in, in, a, in the light. Um, I did switch the eye drop um, tool to um, a different setting at the top. This this is really useful, by the way, especially if you're if you're using multiple layers to achieve colors after a grayscale rendering. You want to switch that little tab at the top to like current layer or layer below, or whatever it is that you're. If you're trying to get that color that you laid down initially, let's say, um, and you change all kinds of attributes about it, like you maybe lower the opacity on the layer and change the layer style to like a different, you know, like an overlay or something. If you want to color pick that exact color that you used again, um, just like hit the eyedrop tool, go in the top, one of the drop down menu, um, and change it to like current layer or layer below. And it gives you different options too, like layer below with no adjustments or um, all layers below and etc. So. I remember when I first figured that out, it like blew my mind. I was like, what? Seriously? This whole time? Um, so there's the, I mean, Photoshop's got so many things going on that uh, when I first started, I used to just straight paint with like, I didn't use grayscale at all. I used to just pick the colors I wanted and just hack at it with a single brush on a single layer and just, you know, I still kind of do that. Um, be honest um, I depending on the illustration but for myself for my personal illustrations I that's I usually do that for employers I can't because they're gonna ask for some revisions and stuff so if you paint it all on one layer then you're gonna have to you know do all the revisions on that same layer you can't go back or um, anything like that and oh a really good tip in uh, just managing everything that you've done. Um, so some artists like to have several files of save states of where they, you know, where they were, and they save along, you know, along the way. So they'll have several uh, saved versions of the the same image. If you have a small laptop like I do, that doesn't have too much storage space, it gets really, really messy and and. Um, annoying to deal with all those files. So what I do is I always have a flat layer and uh, so what I'll take is or, or at least a cutout of the uh, current character um, and what I'll do is I'll take that and I will hold down um, command or um, control um, and then hit all the layers um, well, you hold down shift as well, so control and shift, and then you 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 select all the layers uh, that's part of the character, and then uh, and then you just um, control uh, control option and C, so that's uh, control copy everything, um, everything that's that's merged or below the current layer you're on. And then you and then you paste it in place. So then you have the current rendition of your character, but all on one layer. And then you can delete all the layer effects under it up until, I guess, the the, the state before that that you wanted to save. So you'll have like um, several iterations of the character, and you can toggle through each one um, without having to turn off all the layers or remember which ones need to be on and all that stuff. Um, and when you download the, the PSD, you could see um, I'll have it in there. Um, Imagine Effects requires that I have several uh, PSD uh, files um, of the same image. So I, I do actually have like, you know, version one and then like an hour in, I have like a version two and an hour in. But each one, I still also have that that same cropping. It's really, really useful because um, you may get carried away with the rendering, and then you'll 
you'll look back and be like, ah, oh, but there was this part that I did that I really liked and now I messed it all up. So you're able to just like grab that um, merged, that merged version and just pull it up on top to toggle. Um, and what I like to do sometimes is I'll, I'll duplicate a previous version and then pull it on top of my current version and then toggle it and then the areas that I like I'll keep in the areas that I don't and I like my current versions I'll erase it all out and then I'll merge it down so it's 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 just like how to manage multiple layers and stuff I think it's a really good way of doing it so yeah now I'm just I'm really just um, messing with the rendering you know because in the black and white stage I didn't render out all that much like I, I kept the forms pretty simple right so now I'm beefing up all the contrasts I'm uh, um, thinking I'm con right now I'm constantly thinking of how to design this thing a little a little better I for the pose um, one of the guidelines that they required was not to have any of the characters body parts like foreshortened which is something that I'm very used to doing because um, all my work, to this point actually, from uh, Udon Entertainment to Capcom, Bandai stuff, um, even uh, I did some work for even Riot Games and Microsoft Games, like everything to this point was like just really crazy poses with lots of foreshortening and stuff like that. And so it, it, I know that some people actually struggle with that I actually struggle with the complete opposite, like making something less, uh, I guess, uh, extreme. Um, I have problems <laughs> with it. I'm always like, oh no, I want like this this arm like way in the foreground, and then uh, I remember my first sketches for this, like my little thumbnails, which I'll probably share up on um, when uh, with this tutorial. Uh, I had like, you know, like arms in the foreground, spray cans, like like right at the viewer and you know or the uh the roller blades like you know smack in your face and giant wheels but um yeah they wanted it a little more contained
Okay, so we're back. I uh, forgot to record this last little bit. I did do some adjustments here um, to the color. Let's see if I can. My computer's dying right now. Okay, okay yeah. So <clears throat> I just like changed the the. The hue of the hair, and I added in this little core shadow here, and I did add a division, a separation, like a lighten layer, I think. Yeah, lighten layer, just to pull back the background a little. <clears throat> I was getting really saturated, and um, this is typically how I work, anyways. I I tend to really oversaturate things, and then go back and adjust them again. Um, most of my art friends actually do the opposite. They start really desaturated and then they build the saturation. It doesn't really matter. As long as you're conscious of the, the fact that you're doing one or the other, that way you can, you can adjust them. So I am a little sick. They catch a cold from a friend, so it will sound really weird for a while. But yeah, let's get into this.
so after lots of hours of rendering, uh, I reached a point where I'm a little bored with the image, so I need something extra to uh, help with the overall composition. So you're going to see me start messing with some layer effects. And at some point I'm going to put in um, a rim light as well, um, just to beef up the contrast of the character. I don't actually have like a, a, a reason behind it yet. At the on the final illustration, I ended up adding in like a sun in the back of her, so uh, like a stylized looking sun to match the background. So it does make sense for that rim light, but um, at this stage, I just needed something. So. So here comes that layer effect uh, stuff I was talking about. So I originally I wanted something really stylized uh, behind her. I wanted her to look like she was ghosting, like leaving a ghost trail. But um, I didn't end up doing this at, at the very end because I I went with like a rim light instead with the sun behind her. But I think this would have been pretty cool too. Uh, so. So I'm taking off the certain channels of that that outline to get different color effects. And then also messing with the blend mode as well. So you can see it's just it looks it's cool. I mean, it's not this isn't. This wouldn't be how I'd leave it. I would have continued on it and, and added some more interest in the shapes and and the overall design of this the, these effects. But this was just to get an idea.
Okay, so fast forward it a little bit. I I did forget to record this little part where I actually did put in the the rim light, and I did render out the uh, face a little. So I'm just toggling through the layers so you could see my process. And of course, with the with the actual Photoshop file, you can toggle yourself to see what I did here. So whenever you use like an, a screen layer or something like that to add in like a blown out effect or whatever, you, you'll start to lose some of the contrast, of course, you know, that's the point, but you'll lose some of the contrast, but you also lose some of the, uh, the uh, saturation as well. So I did follow up with like several other layers to bring back the saturation where, where I put the screen layer so that it really gives that illusion of like a really warm light that's uh, bouncing through uh, certain materials and creating like a subsurface uh, scatter effect, especially in the hair. So the hair looks kind of like candy, luminescent on its own. So I've been neglecting the rollerblades for like almost the entirety of this illustration and I think it's because I was just afraid of, of starting on it. Uh, and you know, I've never rendered rollerblades before so, and it's, it's also something where I, you know, I had to design them as well so they didn't look like your average rollerblades and um, 
I wanted to give give it kind of like a, a, a cami feel from Street Fighter. Uh, she had like her own little spin-off series, um, and if you check it out, it, um, she, her her designs for that. Uh, she had rollerblades and stuff, and it looked really cool. It's, um, I think it was called uh, Cannon Spike. It's an old arcade game. It was like from like the early two thousands and stuff. Um, but she had these really cool um, rollerblades, as well as like. Uh, elbow pads and stuff. It, it was really I don't know. It gave her like an, a little extra, and I think in the new uh, Street Fighter Five, her costume actually has a few decals from that Cannon Spike game. So, um, anyways, I wanted it to feel a little more like that. So I finally started rendering out these rollerblades. And they do change pretty drastically too. I end up removing that little those little yellow tabs and stuff. And,
so another little uh, jump I did here. Um, of course, I forgot to record this. It was really straightforward, though. Uh, I added in a, uh, a couple of darkened layers for the background uh, to start bringing in some color gradients because I didn't enjoy how the the yellow background was just fading to more yellow and, and lighter yellows. And it, you know, I wanted to keep it just one color in general, but I think adding in the green now is really making the illustration feel like a retro, uh, like a retro 80s, like late 80s, early 90s feel. Um, and then for for the rim light too, you never want to have like a rim light that's just like purely white. It's it's always it's always a good idea to um, maybe just choose a really uh, saturated color of of the material, like a saturated um, light color of the of the original material and add it in. So if you look at the knee pad, where the rim light is, it's actually just a really bright bright blue instead of white, and uh, it adds dimension and depth to your image, makes it feel like it's a real light that's hitting it. Um, I also added an, a character outline behind the character. It's like this soft little uh, yellow uh, glow just behind her, just to lift her again from the, from the back of the image. And I also did uh, change the, the 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 ramp a little. Like I was saying earlier in the, in at the beginning of the tutorial, I was saying how uh, they didn't want anything from the character in the foreground. So, but that didn't uh, limit me to having a foreground element. So I did take the ramp and um, I skewed it a bit and made it made it um, come closer into the foreground to fill in that bottom left side because um, this illustration is going to have like a lot of uh, placeholders around it um, because it's a cover there's going to be the title at the top and a bunch of uh, writing on the sides and bottom and I know right in the middle like bottom left middle there's going to be the, 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 the header for this for this issue so that's why it's pretty um, <clears throat> clear uh, there's nothing really in that area. Uh, we, we also wanted it to feel like she was going to be spraying those words up on the, on the cover. So um, that's, that also gives reasons to why I have the positioning of the hand that way and, uh, and that empty space in the bottom.
So I am wrapping it up here. Um, I did end up going a little further with uh, some of the details in the background, especially the buildings. I ended up doing like a very simple, uh, we wanted to look kind of elementary, a very simple uh, outline for buildings. I, I just added in some windows and stuff, just some more textures. I, uh, I did also add that sun we were talking about in the back. Um, and you'll see the final illustration, like adding that sun just made like a world of difference. Like it really made the character feel like it's part of the background, but then being that the background's so simplified, it, it also kind of separated her. So it, it gave both uh, effects uh, simultaneously. Um, and then the clouds at the bottom left, I ended up changing that too into trees. I guess it made more sense in terms of layers, you know, you have the sky, the clouds, the buildings, and then, and then trees instead of clouds. So I did change that into, into trees. Um, other than that, everything else kind of looked the same. I did change the color of her shirt too, because the white was getting lost up against that, that bright yellow. So I, I did change it to like a darker orange and, uh, and yeah, and then that's that's how I got to the final image. Hopefully you guys learned a little from this, or learned a lot, I don't know. Hopefully you learned something from, from this tutorial. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to do some more in the future. Uh, if I do, I mean, if you guys follow me already on any of the, any social platform, I, I will make a post if ever I do do another tutorial. A lot of people have been asking for like a Patreon. If I if I do do a Patreon, it's gonna be very um, educational. I don't I don't want to do anything like requests or anything like that. I, I I think I would stick to like a really just a um, um, educational platform and just follow uh, follow up with students and, and you know um, if you guys have questions on how to do certain things or paint, just do a lot of paint overs on your your work and, and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, yeah, hopefully in the future when I have when I have some time aside from work. I am currently taking a huge break, but I'm working on a personal project, so we'll see how that turns out. Um, so thank you for watching, and uh, if you do have further questions about this particular uh, tutorial, you can always DM me on, uh, on Facebook or Instagram. Um, I'm pretty active on those two, so yeah, thank you.